Hi, everyone. I'm Molly Miles. I'm a digital project manager for Harvard's Public Affairs and Communications Office. Um, and I sit kind of in a content strategy team that helped run this whole redesign project we're about to talk to you about. Uh, hello, uh, Jillian Kennedy. I'm a senior web engineer at Human Made, and I was the technical lead for the Harvard Gazette redesign. And we are here today to talk about uh, the accessibility and innovation at uh, the Harvard Gazette. Right. Yeah, so this was a very big project for us. Um, we probably started it, what, a little over a year and a half ago. Um, the Gazette is, is Harvard's flagship kind of newsroom. Um, so lots of eyeballs on it, very important across the university. And, you know, we, we were coming off of um, a design that, you know, had some limitations and templates and options and like what kind of storytelling we could do. So this whole project was super important for us to, you know, make the new experience really engaging, easy to use for all users, um, flexible for our editors, you know, we can't do redesign projects every year. So you got to make it as flexible as possible to have that longevity. Um, and yeah, we really try to incorporate accessibility in at, at for every level. Um, and so it was great partnering with our friends at Human Made for this as well. And furthermore, they were, they helped with our discovery and design phases and were awesome. Phenomenal. Yes. So we want to talk a little bit about how we plan features, um, not just during the initial build, but um, ongoing as well. Uh, so carry on, Molly. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, the usability and accessibility was huge for this. Uh, we did a pretty robust discovery phase. Um, we did stakeholder interviews. We did some focus groups. We also had a intensive kind of on-site workshop week, which was super invaluable. We looked at all the different things, like what was our process, you know, what was, um, we, we looked at analytic stuff we wanted to go over. We threw out branding ideas and- We talked was, about the user journey and different types of yeah. users. Yeah, and that was really great. Um, and it really helped us kind of see what issues people were having or things that were already good that we just wanted to build off of. Um, and also how do we incorporate that for our editors who, you know, some of them are writers first and foremost, who may not be um, as in the know on all the accessibility things they need to look out for. So how do we incorporate that into the editor uh, to make it easier for them? And then, you know, we, we started planning out how we test with real users as much as possible um, and did, we ended up doing, um, they're called Fable tests with real users with different abilities. Um, and they gave us some incredible feedback that we were able to incorporate as well. And so you mentioned it before, every project has a budget. You can't do a full redesign every year. And so we needed to talk about scalability and how we can get as much as we can into the budget that we have and how to make sure the site would continue to be flexible for the long term. Yeah, so we looked at what we had technology wise. Um, and we threw a lot of ideas out there initially. And then, you know, we kind of had to rein it in. So what's possible? Um, and looked around instead of, you know, a lot of sites are like, okay, here's your five templates that you get and you have to work within those. But this really, we looked at, thanks to Gutenberg too, um, it, having the block system in place that we can move things around. You can essentially um, create your own templates from that. So that's been really great for us to work with. And um, and our editors have been enjoying that as well. So it's good. Yeah, we like working that way. You know, um, back in the day, I think you would you would design pages top to bottom. This is your page, right? And maybe you'll get five of those. Um, but uh, 
with furthermore, we started out from um, the concept of uh, more of a component library. So we're developing, you know, individual blocks um, to serve kind of different storytelling purposes. And then, you know, from those, you can build really any layout that you want on any page and you can come up with almost infinite combinations. All right, so we have um, we have a couple of things we want to show off um, from what we've uh, from what we've built already. Uh, so let's jump into those. Uh, one of the things that we did that we were really excited about um, was a color palette picker, um, and this is different from the core uh, WordPress color chooser um, because we really wanted to focus on making it easy for editors, uh, content editors, to create accessible pages quickly and easily. And so um, with the default WordPress controls, it's really easy <laughs> to set the background to green and the text to red or something you know, equally difficult to read. And so um, what we really wanted to do was make it easy for people to just choose, like, I want this article to be in this color theme and have it change the whole page at once and choose colors that worked well together that met those accessibility guidelines we were going for. And so um, with this color palette picker, you can just choose, I want the red color palette or the purple or the green or the blue, and it changes um, the contents of the whole article. Any, any little pieces like the little UI elements or the text or the backgrounds, anything that should have a color switches to um, the appropriate colors from that group of colors, like the lighter shades or darker shades of red, whatever's needed to make the, the right color combinations. Um, uh, so the next thing that we did to make it really easy for, for editors um, is we have six different article headers. And uh, so this is a block, it's a single block um, with different block styles. And that allows editors to kind of start building an article and not really have to worry about which layout they want. They don't have to choose a template before they get started. So they just jump in, they start adding their images and their text and their titles. And then based on which images they choose and which layouts work better, they can just change which, uh, which header style they want. And that also changes the, the, con the layout of the content area below it to work with the layout of the header. Um, and uh, if we have a chance, if we have time, we're going we're gonna to do a quick demo of that to, to, to really show you what we mean. Um, we also created a supporting content column which is um, which is different from a normal sidebar. So um, a lot of sites, you know, you have you have the content and you have the sidebar, and everything in the sidebar is kind of stacked at the top, and then on mobile it gets stacked underneath, right? Um, but what we wanted to be able to do was share interesting bits of content in line that go right next to the thing that they're related to, and so. Um, you might be reading a story and you have um, an image or a pull quote or something like that that you want to share but not have it interrupt the flow of the story. And so you can place those sorts of things in the supporting content column and they will sit right next to the paragraph that they go with. And then on mobile, it just inserts itself in line between the two paragraphs surrounding it so that you still get that same like journey um, on mobile as you do on desktop. Um, and then the next fun thing that we built was an image create, uh, replace on scroll block. And what this does is as you scroll down the page, um, you can either have um, a single image and more images load on top and kind of fade in on top. Um, or you can have them load in side by side and do one and then the next and then the next and then the next. And um, we can show you that real quick. So for this story, as you scroll, uh, you can see, I got to get to the right section, but here we go. You can see that one image is scrolling in and then the next one and the next one's coming in next to it. So just a little, just a little fun thing to add a little bit of um, extra engagement to the page. All right. And Back to the uh, slides, we have um, demo time. Yeah, quick. We'll just do a quick editor demo, just to show off some of these fun features. 
we have um, an article about Taylor Swift and why she's so great um, <laughs> that we're just going to do a little quick um, edit or demo for. So uh, load that up. Oh, Molly, you're already oh, in there. Yeah, okay. I was ready over. to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, I think it's doing it. There we go. Okay. So, uh, so you can see that we have, um, there are some colored elements, the purples here and here. Um, if we, let's just uh, shop the color palette picker real quick. So if I were to switch this to blue, you can see that all of these elements that were purple are switching to blue and then green and then red. And if you had a lot of different elements um, on the, <laughs> on the page, it would, it would just, it would switch all of those. And so we don't have a lot on this article, but you can see that that's happening. Um, yeah, if we or... want to select that quote block, sorry to backseat drive. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cause I believe that's the one, well, maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. Isn't there one you change the background color on and it makes it an accessible color combination? Yeah, that's the more complex quote, I think. Oh. Um, but I think we can do that with the header, though. Yeah. So um, so with the header block, we have um, several different versions. We're on the full screen version right now. You can see it has some different options here for creating different um, combinations. You can fade in the main heading on the page load. Um, you can fix the background position, which would make the text scroll on top of it. Um, but if we switch over to, um, let's do the square style. The square style is fun. You wouldn't use it for this article because obviously the text is blocking Taylor. <laughs> but that's what we were saying about you can choose your images and then pick the one that goes best with, um, with your images. But for this one, it's just a nice way to demo the color palette because we can we can set the um, the text background to be yeah. colored. Yeah, and this is you an can... example of the, what I was trying to talk about. So these, yeah. colors, the even the lighter purple on there, there. So we were required to meet at least double A accessibility um, for all of our websites at Harvard. So having these preset colors in there, know the fonts are going to be right and visible, um, is just such a huge help. So you can see that I'm switching between the colors and we've got a light version and a dark version. Um, and that just gives them, gives them, the content editors really a lot of flexibility in what they're trying to build. And you can switch between the different layouts um, just to see what some of the different options are. The display title has a, an extra little image heading here and that, that can be for, um, maybe a kind of like an environmental study or something where your background image is um, not having people in it. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've just got a lot of different options here. You've got one that doesn't have any text over the image at all. Um, you have um, one where they're side by side and this one also has um, an extra image and um, details section over the image. Uh, so yeah, just some different options there. I don't want to spend too long on this, um, but just a, yeah, just another quick thing that um, as we change, you may probably didn't notice this, but as we change the header style, it's also changing the layout of the content area below because it wouldn't make any sense for your, um, your body copy to be left aligned if your headline is center aligned and so it just um, it just goes ahead and switches those for you um this one i think is my browser is too narrow for this to really display properly but um on the front end they do they do line up yeah. um but there you go um and i'm gonna switch back to the slides uh, because I have a couple of questions I want to ask Molly now that we've, we're out a couple of months from launch. Um, 
and I've moved on to different things and I'm just really excited to hear um, how the site's going. So um, since the launch, what all have you been working on? Um, have you been able to use the site in some new ways or build out new types of content? Yeah, so since we launched in January, um, so quite a bit of time since then, and you know we had commencement a um, couple months ago. So we've built out, um, we have category landing pages. We also have series landing pages. So we were able to use some of the new blocks we built to make a custom landing page for all of our commencement content. So that was great. Um, and right now we're working on a new content um, kind of section and we're really playing around with the different blocks. We're really working on some more immersive storytelling. Um, so hoping to build some new ones as well. We're looking at the more along the lines of like the image replace on scroll. Um, but yeah, trying to really see, okay, now that we've got our groundwork in there, how do we, how do we advance on top of that and um, do some more immersive storytelling? Oh. Uh, did you have anything that you wanted? I can switch over if you'd like to share that or. Um... Oh, let's keep going. I just didn't know. Okay. 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 Time. Right. <laughs> yep. um, and do you have any feedback that you can share with us on the uh, site accessibility? Yeah. Um, so we work really closely with our accessibility team here. Um, and one of our partners was actually involved in the project from pretty early on um, to give feedback and I know for them, you know, their big thing is always being able to get in early into these projects so that they can lead their, you know, give us their expertise and make it as smooth a project as possible. Um, so they were very grateful for that. And we've also just heard that, you know, a lot of the labels that are the area label, area labels, hope mm. I said that right. Aria, yeah. <laughs> um, that we've used and the way the site is structured, even from pretty early on in test, we got really good feedback on um, in terms of how screen readers use the site. Um, and so that's been that's been really great to hear. Um, and we always keep that in mind going forward. You know, we we're trying as we're trying to make even these more immersive um, pieces that we want to add they're going to be, you know, we're going to have testers involved every step of the way, but yeah, so far the feedback's been really positive. Awesome. Um, and if we have time, we have one last question on our side, but we I also saw we've got some questions from the audience. The great yeah. questions. I'm very impressed that you've arrived prepared with your own <laughs> questions. This is like a dream come true for me. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and don't let me interrupt you. Yeah. You, uh, you far okay. away with this final one. Um, yeah, Molly was interested in telling us about um, the custom workflow that we did for uh, for News Plus. Um, I don't know if you wanted to kind of share that or if you'd want me to since I'm already sharing. Uh, yeah, I don't have that one up. Okay, I can, I can switch over to that. Give me just a sec. Uh, yeah, I can tee this up a little bit. So... Uh, we have this content type on our site called News Plus where a lot of things that might not make it into, you know, they might not make it to the homepage, but they're still important stories for departments or the different schools. We need a place to tell those. Um, so that's kind of what this is. And it's a scaled back version of our normal articles so that users with all the different abilities in terms of technical um, expertise can put stories in easily. So it's pretty um, pretty simple here. We've just got a title, you get to add one image. There's a spot for names and contact information. Um, and then there's, um, they can put their copy in and it has a limit of 500 characters on it. And then they can, you, these usually link back to a full article on like a school's website. And then there's an approval workflow where it comes into one of the Gazette's editors for, you know, review and publishing. Um, and this is you can see you're limited as to what you can actually insert here, too. Um, yes. And that that just makes it so much easier, I think, for the. 
Yeah, I think a lot of us in higher ed, we we work with all different types of users and not all of them are going to want to build a scrolling, scrolly telly immersive story. They just need to get um, a piece out there quickly and easily. And this really helps with that. Yep, excellent. All right, I will switch back a to- A couple of audience questions as well coming in, just to yeah. let me know. So, sure. um if now's a good time for those if not you sure can... absolutely um oh, well i'm gonna press this if i press this button maybe that shows the question on screen even that's pretty Ooh, sick, isn't it so awesome. uh, is it possible to share some of the questions and findings from the research you conducted so yeah maybe you can just give us a little flavor of the research that you conducted if possible um, or maybe that's something to follow up on afterwards if it's, uh, if that's, uh, yeah, we can do a little bit of both. Anything. Um, we have lots of great yeah. info from that. Um, some of our findings were that <laughs> we actually got a comment that was, we like it just the way it is. And we were like, well, that's not helpful right now because <laughs> we want to try to advance, but that's important info. You know, sometimes you are doing the right, you're doing it right. And users are enjoying it. Um, mm. And we, yeah, we definitely wanted to make sure we didn't um, remove anything that people were really enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find that, um, you know, then when I guess as part of the launch, did, did you have to do anything to manage your user expectation, I guess, through that then, you know, in terms of, you know, some things are going to change. Maybe this is something that they love and uh, dealing with change can always be difficult, even if it's better. Yeah, I don't think we really did. Um we got a lot of positive feedback we have a daily email that also goes out nice uh, um and even though the layout changed the content mm. was still in a very uh approachable format and that was one of the bigger things we were worried about um we didn't have time to show that here but um yeah i think that was fine you know we didn't really hear what did you do to my email so that was good <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so if I click that, then the next question we have, I reckon we can squeeze one more in. Um, it looks like you're really embracing the block editor for the editor experience. Um, what to what extent is it used for the rest of the site? Uh, so I guess yeah, beyond, beyond are you using the block editor or using the block editor beyond uh, the the ed the content editing experience. Yeah, I guess um, for the rest of the sh the site, if you mean the rest of Harvard.edu um so that's in a different setup and system um mm. it's also a slightly older site and uh the team i work on only manages parts of that and that is in a block editor um but not all the sites at harvard are but it's definitely as we look at potentially redoing that site in the future something we want to expand upon the way we have it with the gazette but for the uh, for the Gazette site, we are using um, the full site editing. So we have block editor um, for the like the header and footer and templates and everything as well. Super cool. OK, last one. How do you manage image cropping for editors who aren't familiar with how to crop and recrop images to place the focal point in the right spot for their needs? This one, we're actually still working on. It's been tricky. Um, you know, we're looking at another third party plugin for it um, just because we have so many different needs. So right now we have mainly three editors who put in a lot of our content and we've really just had to train them um, as we work on these features, but they're very involved as we're developing them to make sure it's gonna work for their needs. Um, yeah. That Maybe we can follow up on that one at some point when we get that <laughs> fully off the ground. That's it. Well, there you go. T already teasing a future uh, a future presentation. So uh, you've always got to you've always got to have a cliffhanger at the end, ready for the next episode. 